if we have a block of code that we are going to reuse in our game. For example, if we have a block of code that calculates a position of our player and gives us that position and we need that, well, basically every, well, two seconds or five seconds in our game, we can group that code into functions and it will be more cleaner or it will create more cleaner code. So we create functions typing like this. So we will type void and later I will explain what this means. And now you will name that function. So for example, we could say print something and add these parentheses and then these, well, curly brackets. And what we type between these parentheses or excuse me, between these curly brackets is the code that's going to be executed when we run this function. So we can type here, for example, debug.log, which will print in the console and we can say from function. So this will display from function in our console. Now, in order to execute this, we can just copy the name of our function and this is how we call it. So write the name of the function and these parentheses and this then, excuse me, just end the statement. So now if we go back here and when I run the console, or excuse me, run the game, we will see from function printed out in the console. So basically anything that we put here will be executed when we run that function. Now, there are different types of functions that we can use, and I will go through them one by one and explain what they will mean. Basically, the first type of function is a function that returns no value and takes no argument, which is this function here. Now, when we type void, that means that our function does not return a value, and we did not provide any parameters. So basically, we can go back and execute it again. We will see, well, from function printed out in the console. Now, let's say, for example, we want to see a function that takes an argument. So what we can do is here, between these parentheses, we can say, for example, string and message. So let me just type it right. So it's message like this. I have spelling problems. So now this function takes an argument and instead of typing here from function, we can simply provide this message, which is a parameter. So this right here is a parameter or an argument and we can use that argument inside of this function. Now we are not limited to one argument, so we can say comma and we can provide another argument. So it can, it can be string name or it can be an integer speed. So we can say int speed or any other argument that we basically like. And we can use each of these arguments inside of that function to perform, well, different operations. So in our case here, we are going to print the message that we provide using debug.log. Now the difference when calling this function earlier and now is that we need to provide an argument here. So here we can say, for example, hello, or well, anything that we like. Earlier, we had that message here inside of this debug.log, but now we need to provide it. So we provide it like this, or we can even create a string. So we can say, for example, string hello is equal to hello like this. And here we can simply type the name of this string. So we can just well, provide the name and this will basically be the same. But I will not do it like this. I will just put hello here. So we can go back now in here in the console and we can run the game and we will see that hello has been printed out in the console, which is the argument that we well specified here. Now, if we want a function to return a value, and I can just delete these arguments here because we will not going to need them. And I can delete this debug.log. Instead of void, we will type the type of the variable that we want to be returned. So for example, we can type a string. Now inside of this function, we need to return that variable and we need a return statement. And we can say, for example, hello or anything that we like. And now what we can do is we can use debug.log here and we can call the function print something. So here it will be print something and this will print hello to the console. So if I go back in Unity and run the game, we will see hello is printed here in the console, which is the value that's basically returned. What we can do also with these, well, functions that return a value, we can say, for example, string hello is equal to print something because it will return a string and we can catch it inside of this string and then we can print the string. It will basically be the same. Now we can also return integers. So we can say, for example, int and we can say here, let's say we want to return two plus three, for example, and we can return that. So we can, well, simply concatenate that here and go back in the console 
If I run it, it will return 5, which we see here because 2 plus 3 basically is 5. So we can also return other types, well, a variable, we can return a boolean, so on and so forth. But basically, you get the point. The last type of function that I will show you is a function that takes arguments or an argument and returns a value. So I will leave an integer here, so it will return an integer. But here we will provide two arguments. We can say int a and int b. So here, instead of, well, adding 2 and 3, we can add a and b, basically. And as I said, you can add multiple arguments, just separate them, well, by comma. So now this function will calculate a and b, and it will return the sum of a and b. And here, when we are calling this, and I will again use concatenation, and now when we are calling our function, we need to provide two arguments. So for the first argument, I will say 5, then comma, and let's say 2 for the second argument. So if you have more arguments, you will separate them by comma the same way as you are separating them by comma here. And if I go back in the console and, well, print it out now, we will see 7 is printed out in our console because we provided 5 and 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. And these are the types of functions that we can use in our everyday programming. And for example, we can use something or a function similar to this to calculate the position of the player. So here we will pass the position of the player, we will calculate it and return it. So as I said, these are just basic examples of functions that you can use and you can create in your game programming.